Hey guys, it's J19, brought to you another video, and today we got um, some more information. Um, I just did my reaction to the three big giant gameplay footages. Go check that out um, when it's completely uploaded right now as we speak. Um, yeah, this is definitely more information. I just scrolled through this. I'm going to read it all to you guys. There's a lot to take in from the Gematsu ed article. Um, he did an interview with uh, Nuriki Yoshida. Uh, and the team so i'm really interested to have more final fantasy 16 news for you guys i'll probably have to split these up in multiple videos throughout the week so expect that um i'll start off with just this article for the day along with my reaction videos um feel free to check that and this one out as we speak if you guys want more final fantasy 16 you guys know what to do like subscribe to new hit the bell notification share with a friend when i said it helps me very lot very much so appreciate it ton let's get right into it um it says Final Fantasy 16, a detailed breakdown with producer Yoshida, Yoki, uh, Yoshida, Yoshida. Let me call him Yoshi T. Um, that's how I know him. Um, the renowned producer breaks down the core staff, world, characters, and more. Um, earlier this month, Chris Square Enix held a global media tour of Final Fantasy 16, allowing members of the press to go hands-on with the next entry in the Final Fantasy series for the first time. Present at the event were Final Fantasy 16 producer, director, Combat Lead, Localization Director, Fox, Takai, Yoshida, and Suzuki. Uh, before the press sent off on their own to go hands-on with the game, Yoshida, through interpretation Koji Fox, gave our press a thorough overview of the core con development team setting, theme, characters, and gameplay of Final Fantasy XVI. Alright, as you can see, uh, we are not much to look at. <laughs> oh, the photo, okay. These just seem funny. Um, first off, we have myself, Yosh uh, Yoshida, Final Fantasy 16 producer. Next up, we have our main director, uh, Takai. Next up, we have our creative director, main scenario writer, uh, Mihiro. Uh, Fox added, next up, we have myself, location localization director, um, Fox. In addition to... Addition with location director, I'm working on. I worked on many, a lot of different things in Final Fantasy 16, such as aspects, such as lore, motion capture, the language, colorization, voice recording, writing, and more. I'm kind of a jack of all trades on this project. Yoshida continued. Next up, we have our art director, um, Mina Gawa, who made it known from Final Fantasy 14, Final Fantasy 12, and Final Fantasy Tactic. All those games that are known for their impressive visuals. And to see familiar faces, I'd like to introduce to our new star combat director, Suzuki. Uh, after spending the majority of his career at Capcom, he joined the Final Fantasy 16 team to help us create an unparalleled real-time action experience. I can't help but be super excited, guys, of reading this, because after reacting to those videos, the gameplay, I am blown away. I cannot wait. I love uh, DMC, DMC 5's combat. It has a lot of, lot of elements from that in that game. In this game, this site's so good. Let's continue. And last but not least, we have our sign sound designer, um, Sokin, who known as, as you know, who works with me in Final Fantasy XIV. You can see the ones that look the most tired, tired and have the pal palest, palest faces are, are the ones that worked on both projects, 14 and 16. So it means Sokin's been hard at work, so you can tell that he doesn't get much sleep. Um... What is Final Fantasy 16? First off, it's the latest n number entry into the story of Final Fantasy series. A series that you know you know has 35 years of history, Yoshida explains. Just, just the fact that alone can be daunting a lot of new players. Will they have to play all fi previous 15 entries in Final Fantasy series before getting in Final Fantasy 16? The answer is, in my opinion, guys, is absolutely not. You do not have to play any other one to play Final Fantasy 16. If 16 is your very first one, feel free to jump in. That's no problem. Um, answer is absolutely not, like you said. While the titles, of course, are numbered, each game in the Final Fantasy series is its own unique experience. It has its own story, has its own characters, its own system, its own feel. So Final Fantasy 16 in this respect is no different. Player who had never who had played Final Fantasy games since Final Fantasy 1 as Final F since Final Fantasy, I can enjoy Final Fantasy 16 just as much as players who have never played the ser Final Fantasy series. This would be, this is their first foray into the series. So this is one thing that we worked on really hard on. You don't have to have any experience with the series before you get into Final Fantasy 16. And here we go. We got some inf uh, 
images here from the trailer. Um, we're not going to break it down here. Um, I kind of talked about it a little bit as we as I broke it down and reacted to it. Uh, the four main pillars. Final Fantasy 16 has been developed with focus on four main line main pillars, things that players have come to respect from the games and series. For first and foremost, narrative. This is the game we wanted to go back to the rich high fantasy roots, fantasy roots, roots of the series. Something that has was complex and, and interwoven. Something that touched upon politics, justice, and values would not only be appealing to younger fans just stepping out in the world, but older fans who have experienced a lot themselves. One thing that was important to us, though, we, was a to, to, tell, to tell a story that was complete from the beginning to the end. And that we, we think we have succeeded to fill, uh, fill, uh, officially, factually, I don't even know how to say that. There are 11 hours of cinematic cutscenes in the main scenario alone, all seamlessly interwoven into the game experience, playing in engine in real time. This is so good. So good. And second, we have a vast uh, assembled cast. Each character is unique in their backgrounds, motivation, each have their own unique arc. Arcs that play throughout that play out throughout the narrative. And while the main focus is on Clyde Rossfield, as he seeks vengeance for the loss of his family and nation through his journey, players will witness the face of the remaining cast collide. Ooh, I can't wait. Our development has also played a focus on graphical quality. We wanted to take advantage of the PS5 power to create a massively detailed world, but was only possible on the video game in the video game. And finally, possibly the most important, is our dedication to creating a fresh Exciting new battle system. Over the recent years, real-time action games have continued their march towards becoming the norm among gamers. To keep in step and further involve the Final Fantasy series, Final Fantasy 16 has stepped away from the traditional combat-based battle system. More common in older games in the series and adopted a true real-time action controls, but this doesn't simply involve controlling Clive himself. In addition to smaller scale battles, the Shining Point Final Fantasy 16 battle system are the just summon versus summon battles, which allows players to con control giant beings known as icons to carry out battles on a massive scale, which by far are freaking phenomenal, insane. He added, "All this is possible because of the power of the PlayStation 5. Players will experience seamless and transition from gameplay cutscene to battle, all without load times." Something that helps maintain a feeling of non-stop roller coaster ride that we ultimately have been aiming for. Yeah, I, I can't wait. I can't wait for this. I still can't wait. Uh, world. Next, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Final Fantasy 16 game world. Thank you. In the realm of Val Valstea. Val Val uh, Valstea. Okay. As you can see, dotted about the landscape is this the Mother Crystals. These wellsprings of life and prosperity around the realm's nation are situated and power, which powers the land's magic. One might think of these as mother crystals are large oil fields from which the world gets, its en gets their energy, energy known as either or other. Um, however, as the resources start to drive up, the struggle amongst the nation arises, which ultimately leads into war and conflict. Again, Final Fantasy is targeting what's going on in the world world, um, which is what they've done with Final Fantasy VII and yada yada. So this is great. Um, it teaches us a more story of, you know, let's not be wasteful of our resources because you can end the war and violence and all that, um, which is great. I can't wait. Okay. The realm is compromised of five nations and one neutral state. Located on two different land matches, Storm in the West and Ash in the East. Ooh, more details. Love it. First off, we have the Grand Duchy of Rosaria, the nation from which our protagonist Clyde Rossfield hails. The Duchy, while it may not have much influence on the political stage that the other, as other nations, they remain proud, confident in their history and traditions ruled by the benevolent leader who seeks stability over chaos. Their icon is the phoenix, the warden of fire. Next, we have the holy empire of Sembrek, a large and powerful throughout the uh, theology where citizens remain a strong faith in their, both their god, the goddess and their emperor. 
The massive crystal that you see in the, nor the northern capital makes them one of the most powerful advanced nations in the realm. Their icon is Bahamut, the Warden of Light. Oh man, I'm so sick. I like the two previous mentioned nations, which are situated on the western half of Elsia's twin continent. Storm, our next nation, is situated on the eastern landmass of Ash. Here, in isolation schemes, the nation of Walud, which was the only nation left standing in the Ash after King conquered all remaining tribes, both human and demi human. Their icon is Odin, representing darkness. Next, we have the Dominican Republic, a nation uh, com compromised of five independent states located in the southwestern reaches of Valsia. Though a, na a desert nation, they thrive uh, via trade and while blessed by their mother crystal, which, unlike others, is literally the entire mountain in itself. They are ruled by a council of ministers, but the po true power of lies in the icon, Titan. Next, we have the Iron Kingdom, an ancient nation located on the I islands off the western coast of Alsea. Unlike the rest of Alsea, the Iron Blood sees their mother these mother crystals themselves as sacred and worship them as a deity. Fanaticism. Uh, Reigns on their volcanic island home, and all the other people are viewed as heretics deserving of subjection. Subject. Subjugation. Wow, that's a big one. Finally, we have the Crystal Lions Dominion, a natural state which, at the very center of Alistair, between the land masses of storm and ash. We, how, we Here we find the largest mother crystal in all the realm. Long ago, an agreement was made by all the other nations that dom Dominion could not be claimed by any other, and a mother crystal and its mother crystal would remain neutral, a benefit to all nations, just not this one. Of course, that makes it ripe for plucking, and this area becomes a center of the realm of wide conflict. Can't wait. Exploration. This is what I'm waiting for. In the past, I, men I mentioned that Final Fantasy 16 is not an open world game. What exactly does that mean? So to bring the players a wide variety of detailed environments in the highest quality possible, ultimately enhancing the game experience, we selected several areas that we wanted to focus on and create those in extreme detail. We have several large areas connected by a world map. These areas would, while not what you call an open world, are still quite expansive, expansive and offer a lot of opportunities for exploration. Thank you. This is what I've been waiting for. I love exploring and games. When I get so immersed in games like this, that's why I like open zones. Like, this is what they're going for. Not open world, it's got a world map, but this is like open zones. Like Final Fantasy 12, Final Fantasy 14 even. Like, this is what I want to see. This is excellent. So she had that, then played a second video showcasing a variety of areas available for five to explore. I wish I was there. What you saw here, these are not from the cutscenes. These are actual areas that Clive and players are able to explore. Well, now a fully open world, we do have many, many of these areas that are available for exploration. So, so those of you who are worried about limits of the world, you can rest easy. Oh, this warms my heart. Makes me even more excited. I can't wait. Characters. Next, I'd like to shift, for, shift focus to our characters. And by characters, we mean... Specifically, our dominance, the wardens of the elements, and the keepers of the icons that play such a central role to our narrative. Like in past Final Fantasy titles, where we, these creatures are summoned by, by a summoner, dominance actually become the icons themselves. These massive elemental characters that range from a size of 60 feet up to 360 feet. Whoa! In Final Fantasy 16, these creatures will clash in epic battles, each of them unique in its concept. Oh man, I can't wait. But the icons are just not the battle, are not just about battle. In Final Fantasy 16, we will deeply explore the backstories of each of these dominants who carry the icons. Who drives them? What drives them? What are their aspirations? What are their desires? How do we, how do their rest, respective nations treat them? Some are revered as heroes, while others are made slaves. One thing that can be said about all of them, though, is they're very, they're powerful, akin to these weapons of mass destruction, capable of destroying the entire realm if left unchecked. Luckily, however, the dominance check 
each other, creating the, this delicate Cold War type of balance. Yeah, this is where the world, a world, uh, war is coming in, right? Because it's not gonna last long, right? They, like Cold War is like, hey, we got our big dude, you got your big dude, and uh, it's like, don't mess with us, don't start war. We got our weapons, you got yours. Um, so this is great. Let's take a look at our main protagonist as well as the Dios Dominant, starting with the protagonist Clyde Rousefield. As you know, Final Fantasy XVI is his tale. The story follows him through three distinct stages of his life, his teens, his 20s, his 30s. As such, we can get more detailed picture of how Clyde's reacts and changes to the challenges challenge he faces over the span of, of his life. Our story begins with Clive obsessed in his pursuit of revenge. We see through the this playable flask flashback that he was supposed to have been born to Phoenix, but was not. That blessing of curse falling to his younger sickly brother. So Joshua is sickly, huh? Instead, he learns the sword and has finally selected his first shield, tasked with protecting his brother. However, his brother is lost, sending Clyde down this dark and lonely path of vengeance. Clyde is not only alone in this journey, we also we can't also not forget his faithful companion Torgo. Oh, awesome dog. We, who accompanies Clive among along his journey and fights alongside with him. He's a great fighter and great in battle. He also really cute and of course he can pet the dog. <laughs> wow. That's so cool. And here's Clive's uh, younger brother, Joshua, who controls Phoenix, the icon of fire. Joshua early in the game grants Clive What's this called? The Phoenix. Blessing of the Phoenix that allows Clive to use several of the Phoenix iconic abilities. There you go. That's why Clive's able to use Phoenix. His abilities. However, Joshua, however, at the young age that drives Clive and motivates him, all is losing Josh, however, at a young age. Okay. That drives Clive's motivation and him on his journey. Next, we have Jill Ward, a ward of the family, Rossfield family, and longtime friend of both Clive and Joshua. Uh, tragedy separates the friends, and it's during the time apart that icon uh, that the icon of Ice Sheep awakens inside Jill. She is Clyde's closest companion and accompanies him on his difficult journey to find the truth. But she is much more than just a side character. She is a strong will fighter in her own complex story, which players will watch unfold alongside Clyde. That's going to be amazing. The fans of the series will probably recognize the name Sid as he became one of the few ca constants throughout the series. Though so our syphilis, I'm going to call him Sid, uh, Telamon is completely different from those who have come before. Controlling the icon of thunder, Ramu, Sid is the leader of the group looking to change the world. Fate brings Clive and Sid together, opening Clive's eyes to the real world and to changing his life forever. Next we have Hugo Kup uh, Kupka. Kupka. His official title is permanent economic advisor for the Dominican Republic, but he is well known, best known as Titan, as icon of Earth's dominance. Uh, when it comes to, bat to the battle, the Republic leans heavily on Titan's ta talents to secure their political position in the realm, something that is highly intelligent, that the highly intelligent Hugo is all too willing to take advantage of. Next we see Benedicta Harmon. So despite being a dominant and her harnessing the power of Garuda, Icon Wind serves the kingdom of Walud as a spy, choosing to wield her talents out in the field. She has a dark past as well as connection to both Sid and Hugo. Interesting. We have we also have mentioned earlier in interviews that each nation usually only has one dominant, but in her case she works for Walud. As to why, you have to play the game to find out. Hmm. Here we have D.R. Wessage, a prince of the Holy Empire of Sembrick, and dominant of Bahamut, Icon of Light. He is also a Lord Commander of the Imperial Army, Dragoons, and a hero to the Sembrick citizens. He too, however, has his own trouble, and as players will see it, soon falls victim to the fate's dark pull. Finally, we have Barnabas uh, Thalmer, Walu's agent and dominant of Odin. Uh, the icon of darkness, much of Barnabas is shouted in mystery as he works for behind the scenes. We do not 
We do know that it was by his hand and sword alone that warring tribes of Ash were conquered. The con con continent unified under Waddler's standards. Wow, that's a mouthful there. Battle system. Finally, I want to talk about a little bit about our twin tier battle system. Final Fantasy 16 battle systems can be split into two different distinct types of battles. Foremost and first and foremost, the battles where a player controls Clive and Clive uses the ability to ordinate from the various icons that he meets along his journey. And the second type of battle is we have the large scale battles in which Clive controls icon to fight with another icon. These battles are not only different from the normal battles, we all borrow the original unique experiences created from the ground up to be as specific specific uh, to each battle. As I mentioned, these battles, boss battles, these epic icon versus icon battles are all created from the ground up from the scratch to be unique to each battle. They are not reused in the game, they are only used once. Hopefully it will bring players a very unique and exciting experience for each of the battles. There are many different types from heavyweight type of feel like a pro wrestling match to ones that are a 3D shooting type of game or high speed action. Oh, can't wait. Party battles. Clive will have the opportunity to fight in the party. However, I, because again, with our game design, we wanted players to be able to focus on the real time action battles. Party members will be fully AI controlled. That said, in addition to battle, there is a lot of chatter between the party members throughout the game. They bring a lot of story. Excellent. That's what I want. That's, that's, that's exactly what I want to hear. Right here. That's Torgal. Torgal and Cloud. Uh, not Cloud. But Clive. <laughs> Companion system. While other party members are often only temporary with Clive, our fully AI controller, Clive's trusty hound Torgal, is almost always with Clive, regardless of who else is with him. In addition, Clive can also give Torgo simple commands like you see here affects how he fights in battle. Of course, for those players who might find this overwhelming, we do have an accessory that will fully automate all these commands, which is great. If there's a lot going on, you guys need to put on like these accessories, feel free. Makes the game a lot easier. That's what I like. Icon abilities. Then we talked a little bit earlier about battles with Clive. As we mentioned, as the game progresses, Clive will have the opportunity to learn new and exciting abilities from the icons he encounters during the story. Those can be used alongside Clive's default abilities. These can be purchased and upgraded using the ability points and earned by leveling up. They can be used to fit each individual player's playstyle, of course. For those who cannot decide, there's a feature that auto require, acquires abilities recommend abilities as well as pre respect option that allows players to basically respect their build at any time without any cost. So it's kind of like Elden Ring, but better. You can do it any time, just no cost, which is unbelievably good. Like this, I wish games go like this for them down, down the road. Accessibility. Of course, we understand that is switch to real-time action can be overwhelming and intimidating for players who are not used to these real-time action games. For those who simply want to focus more on the story than the, on the action. So it worked hard to make this game accessible not only to high level fans, but also players as well that may not be as good as action games as others. Which is great. For players who are ready for the action, we recommend what we call our action focus mode. And for those who want to focus on the story, we have what's called story focus mode. What's the difference here? Are, there, are these just difficult settings, like easy or hard? The answer is, is that no. A true answer lies in this, this set of accessories we have that are called timely accessories. These accessories of which two can be equipped at, at a time make certain aspects of the games easier. And such as doing dodging incoming attacks automatically, simplifying complex combos down to a single button press. Selecting story focus mode equip these items from the start, whereas selecting action focus mode means that they're unequipped from the start. It was the only difference. Okay. So here's all your accessories from the story and action focus. Gear and icons. It's kind of neat. Yoshida then showcased a video of Clive using the ring of timely strikes and the ring of timely focus accessories. Uh, former simplifies the complex combos in a single button press while the latter shows slows down time right before an incoming attack lands, prompting the player to press L1 to 
five can dodge out of the way at the last minute. Yoshida continues, accessories like these make the game more accessible while taking away all the fun. Probably maintaining this feel that the player is really playing and what they're re doing matters. Not just turn auto battle system and doing nothing at all, which is great. Again, Final Fantasy 16 doesn't have a difficult difficulty setting. The difficulty is switched by these timely accessories you have equipped. So there are a lot of different combinations we have. Lots of different accessories. Okay. As we come to conclusion, we are also coming to the conclusion of our development of Final Fantasy 16. We're almost close to the master up and ready to the launch of, of the game on June 22nd, 2023 worldwide. I can tell you that we have not foreseen any delays and barring some act of God like a meteor hitting our headquarters in Japan, the game will be coming out on time. So Yoshida is basically saying, don't worry. No delays unless something strange happens. Like, if God gets angry, which I am a believer, by the way. Um, other than that, I think with this, he's basically saying he's not. What he's saying here is he's ready. You know, the game's going to be ready on time. Don't worry about it. June 22nd, we'll be playing this game. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. Um, she also mentioned that the demo playable by members of the press that day was not fully optimized in many different ways from the final game. The development team is currently in the process of optimizing performance and version showcase was a 4K graphic heavy performance mode, but a frame rate mode that prior prioritized frame rate will also be in the full game. The demo itself is also about five hours into the story. Final Fantasy 16 is due out on the play for PlayStation 5 on a worldwide at um, you know, June 22nd. That's what we got. Um, so that's what we got so far. Uh, I do have more information. I will have I'll have more breakdown next. Um, this is a long video as it is, like twenty seven minutes long. Thank you guys for sticking by. Um, let me know in the comments below what you guys think of all this information. Are you guys more excited for Final Fantasy sixteen? Let me know, and I would love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to communicate with you guys, and feel free to join my Twitch, Twitter, and Discord down in the links below. I would love to see you guys there. And as always, have a wonderful day, wonderful night. Keep on keeping on. Have a wonderful day, wonderful night. Let's get hype. Final Fantasy 16 is looking great. I cannot wait. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Take care.